Good morning, Laura. Pleasure to meet you. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm getting a little bit of an echo. I don't know. Are you for me? I am not. Um, it, it may just even be mice, but uh, okay. I can hear you just fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Uh, this is Ethan Anderson. It shows me as Lauren. Um, I am with News Center One. Can I get your title? Yes, um, I'm the Children and Youth Services Coordinator for the South Dakota State Library. You said Children and Youth Coordinator? Children and Youth Services. Children and Youth Services. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you want me to keep my name on the screen or? Um, yeah, that's fine. We're going to be uh, placing um, lower third CGs over everybody as oh. you guys pop up and talk. So that's why I needed that information is so we can. Sure. Yep. No problem. Here. Yeah, this is my first time ever doing anything quite like this. So yeah, I'm going to probably ask way more questions than are needed probably. <laughs> no problem. Um, I don't know what your, I know you've got a virtual background up right now. I don't know what your normal background looks like. Um, is your normal background good enough to use versus the heat out thing that Zoom is doing or not? Up to you. Uh um, I guess usually what they ask us to use when we're doing anything like this is the state library like logo and everything on it. But um, I do have like, I might be able to just blur my background too. I don't know if that would be better. No, this is fine then. Yeah, okay. if that's what they okay. prefer you guys do, then I don't want to upset the apple cart. So yeah, that's just, yeah, what we've been told. So sure. yeah. no worries. Um, could I have you tilt your camera down just a little teeny bit? So sure. we've got a little less headroom. More? Perfect. Thank I you. I can, yeah, I can move this too. So standing now. You didn't wear green. So you got yeah. that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably wouldn't even have thought of that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brant, um, I just wanted to let you know on the notes again, um, I did have kind of a bullet list of facts. You don't have to read those off. Um, I just kind of put those in there as uh, information. Kayla will okay. probably. Kayla will probably touch on them, um, but I just wanted to let you know you didn't have to ramble all those off. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, let me get my, I need a pen. I need a pen, that's what I need. Oh, I don't take the whole set with me. Okay, so we have Miss Laura Kelly, are you our South Dakota State Library representative? Yes. Ah, that solves that mystery. Oh, you conveniently put your name, your name is located right there, right underneath your picture. Yes. Perfect. And I can I can put my title in the chat if you need, or did you you, you got that down? Oh yeah. What's uh yeah? Is your official title just South Dakota State Library representative? Uh, no, it would be the Children and Youth Services Coordinator. Children and Youth Services Coordinator. Hey everybody. Done. Good morning, Kayla. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. I'm on my sixth, seventh cup of coffee, I think, something like that. So we're doing, yeah. we're doing great. That's <laughs> decaf, right? Oh, right. I think I might be getting a second one. <laughs> so some of them may be decaf. Some of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, yeah. I've heard you guys have gone through quite a few of these. <laughs> yes. Murray was great, but I know you're here to top. It. Perfect. You're 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 gonna absolutely blow him out of the water because he was perfect, but you're gonna be even better. Oh, well, that's a lot of pressure. 
<laughs> Murray's no, pretty great. So <laughs> no, you'll you'll do you'll do great. It's been uh, it's been very good. The only things uh oh good morning, Miss K. Let's see, Doctor K. Excuse me. He's fine. Dr. K. Cutler. All right. Professor in early childhood education program at South Dakota State University. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You, right. Should I use my South Dakota background, my SDSU background, or this one? Am I uh, whichever you're me? more comfortable with. Unless there's uh, mm -hmm. from the peanut gallery over here. I'm not hearing anything, so it looks like it's. Okay. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. No, I'm just writing some stuff. Let's see, so this, is that good? Okay. Healer's choice, Kay. <laughs> oh, Laura, a... nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah. I've been wanting to chat with you and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be perfect. I'll see your face-to-face -face once and then. <laughs> I just got an email. Um, I think it was Kim that emailed me. I thought maybe I'd have the wrong name. Just today about the, the young readers books and uh, the one most likely. And then we also have the childcare networking event. And I think you emailed me a logo and description for that. Oh, so yes, yes. <laughs> up. You know, we got lots going on together. <laughs> yes. I was, I didn't even, I should have connected that too. I was just like, Oh, <laughs> click this email, send that. So um, yeah, I'm so excited to be forming more of those connections and how we overlap in a lot of places. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. No, this is wonderful. Well, I'll send you an email after this. We'll find a time to catch up. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. All Sorry, right. so, <laughs> Yes. Grant, are you okay if I explain things and stuff? Ethan, you, you take it away. All right. Thank you. Uh, I know I'm showing up as Lauren Ebert, um, <laughs> but Lauren is not with us today. So I am running the stream. Um, my name is Ethan Anderson. I'm with News Center One. I uh, just want to go through a couple of quick items for everyone because some of you haven't done these before. Uh, hold on. Hold on one second. Clean up an aisle five. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that, things in the office. Um, so what we're gonna do, um, we film these in kind of three segments um, for our purposes. So Brant will introduce everyone and kind of go through things, um, but there are gonna be periods of radio silence um, of 30 seconds or more at times because we work on kind of a 30 second delay with these because of the way Zoom is. So, um, there's just gonna be some awkward moments as we go into segments and come out of segments and things like that. Uh, before each segment, Grant will kind of go through and discuss his plan um, for who he's gonna to go to and, and things like that. So um, I will give it over to Brant and thank you everyone for joining us today. Yeah, just think of me as the cruise ship. This is a cruise ship, I'm just the captain. You guys are the ones that are having you know, having the dinners and all that, you know, you are, I'm just moderating the panel. You guys are going to be doing most of the discussion here, uh, talking about basically uh, summer learning loss, you know, is it really a big deal? And you're like, yeah, it is. It's huge. And here's the reasons why, you know, ABC, I'm going to be breaking this up into uh, a couple different sections. I'll have uh, Laura, more than likely, I'll have you talk more about, uh, what is summer learning loss? What are the trends that we are seeing uh, throughout the state? Or actually, excuse me, Kayla, I will have you talk about the statistics and uh, what are we seeing across the state? And then, um, you know, why is this important to talk about? We'll, we'll go with Laura on that. And then as far as some of the longer lasting effects from summer learning loss, at a community and state level, Kay, Dr. Cutler, I'd like you to uh, brief on that. And we're gonna be breaking this up between uh, commercial segments. If you see me go like this, uh, that just means that we're, uh, we'll have to wrap it up and then we can always touch back on it once the commercial break is, is over and kind of come back to the discussion. But uh, mostly I've been the one who's been rambling. So you guys won't have this problem. It's mostly me that needs to, keep things short. Let's see. 
So yeah, some of the things I'll be asking, what are some of the lasting effects from summer learning loss, uh, available educational resources and tips for continuing summer learning, how to keep things fun and engaging, uh, how others can get involved, advocacy efforts, uh, education, early learning, and just awareness that this is a problem. And we got to address it. How do we do that? So uh, it'll be good. I know you guys will do great. So I guess uh, with that, what I'll do is I'll have my uh, 30 seconds of radio silence after this, and we'll go into it. And to start things off, I'll have you guys introduce yourselves and um, uh, your organization and, or where you are working, and then we'll get right into it. So, Grant, if, those uh, questions, you're going to just the name organization, and then you'll lead me into the stats and question, correct? You don't uh, want me correct, to yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be like, Kayla Klein with uh, United Way of the Black Hills. Can you tell me a little bit more about the statistics of the, of the, of, uh, I'll, obviously I'll say it better than what I just did, but, uh, you know, tell me, uh, can you reference some statistics and findings across the state about what we're seeing as far as this is concerned? Perfect. So, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be doing delay checks with, I'll be, look like I'm talking to myself. All right, we're doing a delayed check. I am talking because I am being told to talk and that is important. I listen to what people have to say to me. All right, good morning. We are talking about childhood learning and the summer loss of education or the, uh, there's many different words for it, but we're basically talking about the amount of education that is lost during the summer period. How can we get that back? What are the resources available? What's the awareness level of this? How big of a problem is it? Well, we got an excellent panel put together today that's gonna be talking about why this is something we need to talk about and what it can do for us uh, moving forward uh, for our kids and for our, our future of our communities. So what I'd like to do is first uh, introduce uh, Ms. Laura Kelly. We are uh, talking about children and youth services coordinator. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you do. Yes, um, I'm the youth Ooh. services coordinator for the South Dakota State Library. And I work with librarians across the state um, to provide programming to children, youth and teens to strengthen and support their reading. Awesome, we are excited to have you here. Uh, Kayla Klein with United Way of the Black Hills, obviously the name presents itself, but I'll go ahead and let you do uh, introduction. Yeah, thank you. So Kayla Klein, I am the Black Hills Reads Director, which is the education initiative underneath the umbrella of United Way of the Black Hills. And our overall goal is to help children reach reading proficiency by third grade. Perfect. Glad to have you. Dr. Kay Cutler, professor in early childhood education program at South Dakota State University. Thank you for joining us. And uh, if you could tell us a little bit about what you've been researching into uh, as far as today's discussion. Well, looking at, um, looking at early childhood and the importance of reading and the importance of the experience of reading as a foundation, as well as a little bit of, of what are the effects later on? Dr. Cutler, thank you so much for joining us. So I wanna get right into this. Um, Kayla, can you tell us a little bit about some of the statistics and uh, what are the findings uh, so far across the state of South Dakota from United Way to Black Hills perspective? Yeah, so um, United, uh, excuse me, Black Hills Reads is a campaign for grade level reading initiative. 
we have five different pillars of focus there, but one in particular is this um, aspect of summer learning loss. So according to the National Campaign of Grade Level Reading, that's where we take our outline from, research spanning over 100 years has proven that students lose ground academically when they are out of school for the summer. So this problem is particularly severe among low-income students. This slows their progress towards third grade reading proficiency, like I mentioned, was our overall goal in the beginning of the segment. In addition, it exacerbates the achievement gap with their middle class peers. So by the end of fifth grade, some of these kiddos could be nearly three grade levels behind their other peers. That's, that's a big deal. And so you mentioned, what are the facts? Like, what are we seeing? So statewide and also nationally, in elementary years, reading as few as six books over the summer will help children maintain their reading level from the school year. When children are provided with just 10 to 12 self-selected books, they can make 50% 50 of them can maintain their skills, but actually even make more progress coming into the next school year. And then of course, studies show that six week summer learning programs can produce significantly significant gains um, in their performance leading into the fall. So instead of trying to, what we see is that as soon as kiddos are done with their fall semester, there's this huge chunk of time where if there's no intervention and help, they're going to lose two months, years of progress, which is just going to affect their learning education, um, their journey in education in, into the future. So it's definitely an issue where we need to be collaborating more and working together to kind of solve this issue. Kayla, thank you for kind of outlining, you know, it's kind of the statistics and what we're seeing. Uh, Kayla, could you talk a little bit about what, what is summer reading loss? Uh, what, what is it? What, what is the child going through when they are not getting this education during the summer? I mean, what, what are the effects here? I mean, and I know some of my other colleagues will most likely mention this, but so when a child is in the middle of a school year, they're constantly being read to, they're getting homework assignments of, of reading, whether it be in categories like social studies or just their simple AR books that their teachers are providing them. They're constantly having the printed word and visuals put in front of them. Um, even communication from teachers, um, the constant talking with teachers and peers. You have that for the nine months uh, of your school year. And then all of a sudden, if, if you're not in a high quality program or if you're not seeing any kind of intervention, you're not involved with the summer um, reading program, maybe with a local library or any of those other offerings throughout the state, that all of a sudden those that rich language and um, seeing the printed word kind of just disappears for an entire, those entire three months. And that drastically affects um, the progress that they've made these entire nine months. And so then it ends up costing the school more money in intervention strategies and things like that. So it's really not cost effective to not help these kiddos um, get engaged more with reading throughout the summer so they don't fall so far behind in their following fall semester. Laura? Uh, Ms. Kelly, would you agree with this assessment from your perspective? Yes, you know, we're always working in libraries to combat this summer learning loss. And that is our busy time of the year when we are seeing those students come to the library. And we know when they're participating, as Kayla said, in a six week summer program, like we offer throughout the library, we're seeing increased um, reading skills and motivation to read and confidence in reading and even just pure enjoyment and reading. So, you know, that's so important and as the State Library, we offer um, a collaborative summer reading program, materials and resources that help all our public libraries work together. And we have a theme every year. Um, this year's theme is animals and tales and tales. And we're just looking at uh, several different ways of engaging the kids as they come in. And like you said, even those peer relationships and conversations with librarians about books that they're interested in and keeping that reading continuing throughout the summer. So we're looking at Laura and Kayla here is the boots on the ground, trying to push this initiative forward. 
uh, what we're going to do when we come back is we're going to be talking with uh, Dr. Kay Cutler at the South Dakota uh, State University. You know, what are the benefits of pushing this initiative forward? What is the research show and why we should be encouraging our kids uh, in the summer to catch up and try and make up this gap? Is the time and resources worth it? We're going to be talking about this coming up. Okay, we're in our first break. Thanks for the 30 second break there. I apologize, Kayla. When I said, when I reintroduced that second concept, I meant to say Laura and I, Kayla came out of my mouth, but you handled it perfectly <laughs> as I knew you would. Good. I was like, uh oh, I might not have answered that question. I was like, you're like, well, as my colleagues would talk about, this is, <laughs> so you, that, that was great. No, that, I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, nope, you're good. <laughs> so maybe that seventh cup of coffee would not have would, would have been well advised maybe to hold off on that. So uh, when we come back, what I'd like to do, uh, uh, Dr. Cutler, is kind of talk about what is your research show? Is summer reading right. important, or, or or rather just your perspective from General your research? Because my I am it is not my research that I've been uh, talking about, but I could talk about general research. Oh yeah, a general research would be okay. just fine. Not saying okay. like she wrote the book on it. I know, I <laughs> Not necessarily know. that. Just what what you have noticed from your perspective and uh, or why a uh, why uh, summer learning would be okay. important uh, for these kids from your perspective. Sure, I can do that. So yeah, no, not to put you on the spot there. <laughs> Sorry. See, so like uh, I'll probably lead with the question of what are some of the lasting effects from summer learning loss. From on a community and state level, from from your perspective, what would the general uh, research show? Okay. So, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and go into radio silence for thirty seconds, and then we'll go right into it. All right, we are back and we are joined by Dr. Kate Cutler, uh, professor in early childhood education program at South Dakota State University. And we wanted to get your perspective from where you stand on why trying to play catch up in the summer is so important. Uh, you know, what have, what have you seen on this subject? Well, within early childhood, the, the being able to um, have a really strong foundation in reading really builds uh, tools for later in life. And so uh, being being read to initially, um, learning how to read through um, developmentally appropriate books, uh, being read to then as well, um, being exposed to so many different vocabulary words and just building vocabulary all builds tools for learning uh, as as children grow forward. Um, and then as, as they move into um, elementary school, middle school, having, having time to read and to continue that growth over the summer allows for um, that building of uh, reading comprehension, understanding what we've, what we've read and being able to use that as a tool um, for communication in addition to vocabulary, really building the vocabulary is another indicator of success later on. And so using that in 
um, both reading comprehension skills and vocabulary skills as um, people get into high school, um, getting ready to take college entrance exams, as well as, um, you know, within early childhood education, we have certain um, exams that are part of um, the major. And so being successful in the major, and that is something that personally that I've I've worked with our early childhood majors on is really in preparing for the content exams and the, the um, student teaching exams to be successful in that. It really comes back to reading comprehension and vocabulary there as well. So having that strong foundation as well as continuing that um, in reading things that they are interested in, um, picking up certain genres throughout the summer and just reading series will help with that. So, I mean, as we know, the world has changed a lot in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, heck, the last five years, the world is changing. You have introduction to social media, you got electronics, you got all these different things. They're kind of throwing a monkey wrench. There's so much distraction out there, but I suppose you can make the argument that regardless at this point in time, education, moving forward, learning things still stems from that ability to pick up vocabulary, to be able to uh, uh, read on different subjects, just reading in general, you know. Uh, so what's that, what's it look like in this day and age when you are competing with social media, when you're competing with uh, video games with TV, Netflix. I mean, you've got everything at your fingertips. How important is it today to still be able to uh, pick up reading and, uh, you know, do that throughout the summer, at least from, uh, uh, from your perspective on this issue? Um, well, in preparing for this, I uh, went back and looked at some of the research that's out there. And even with all the different styles of reading that can happen. Um, there were a couple uh, fairly comprehensive studies that showed that reading um, a storyline, reading a um, work within a plot is important. And so they compared some of the online types of reading to social media, to comic books, to magazines. And they found that, that um, being able to read a plot line and to, to be able to comprehend that is, is a strong indicator um, or a more stable indicator within the styles of reading. And so that's important. It's almost like you're building all your other social skills with it, uh, understanding empathy, understanding all these different human emotions as well. I know that reading for me as a kid was so important to building that foundation because when you're in during the summer, I mean, you're not necessarily around all your friends. Maybe they go back home. Maybe they're going somewhere else. So you have, you know, that kind of separation as well. And understanding, um, understanding all of that uh, would be uh, important. I want to kind of start the uh, conversation as far as uh, resources that are available. Or, uh, Dr. Cutler, from your perspective, where would be a good place to start? Uh, if you're a parent trying to maybe uh, get this process going? You know, really, really thinking about what my child is interested in and being able to tie into um, a particular genre, a particular um, type of media that would fit personally with my child. And then I would look to our libraries. They're a great resource. Yeah, so I'll I'll turn that over to Laura, and to kind of uh, kind of piece together, where do you start out with those resources? Yes, um, you know, as Kay was saying, that we want to motivate students by providing that self-selected resources, and through the State Library, um, just within this last year, we have acquired Read Squared, which is a software program that allows South Dakota public librarians to 
be able to allow um, parents and children to register online for the summer reading program um, with not being able to always walk in the library doors and access maybe more limited um, this next couple summers, we can allow that online and they can go through drive throughs and pick up materials and resources. So really um, getting in contact with the libraries and getting them signed up right away at the beginning of the summer. And they're tracking their reading goals online too. So we're, we're making use of those great resources to set goals for them and to help them self-select those books that are of interest to them. For them. So we're just now starting this conversation about how we get the process going. Now we know that's an issue. How do we start getting it going? We're gonna dive deeper into this coming right up, stay with us. All right, we're clear on that one. Excellent. Uh, uh, that was really good. So we're, we've cleared two segments. Now we just got the last one. Where we're going to kind of wrap all this with a bow and say, here's the resources available. You know, let's say I live in uh, Perkins County. You know, uh, what, am, what are my options? Where are my resources? And Kay, Kayla, I'll let you kind of take a little bit of lead on that as far as 211 is concerned. Um, um, I'd like to get your... Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, where we're going to, we're going to tie this with a very nice bow. Let's see how others can get involved. Let's say I want to help, you know, maybe I don't have kids of my own, but boy, I am, I'm passionate about this. And I know that it helps, you know, where, how do I help? Where do I go? You know, Kayla, uh, Laura, I'll kind of let you, um, talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah, um, I would definitely like to mention our statewide databases and what's available out there. So how they can access okay. those online and then um, definitely about, you know, volunteering and getting involved in the public library. So I have some to say on both those topics. So, yeah. Perfect. And Dr. Cutler, I'll let you say that's important. I know it's <laughs> important. That's important. You should do that. <laughs> so uh, we'll have kind of let everyone get their last minute thoughts and then um, I will sail this boat into the sunset and, and we'll all we'll all get out of here so. Captain. perfect, perfect. <laughs> uh let's see where where are we at okay all right we're we're ready we'll get into our 30 seconds All right, so we, we're back. We've been talking about uh, kids' education during the summer and why it's so important to be caught up. Okay, so let's say I recognize the issue. Where do I even start? I, I don't even know where to start. Kayla, what's a good resource? Yeah, so Black Hills Reads, you know, because our overall goal is to help children reach reading proficiency, we work with so many individuals in, in order to enhance what they're already doing. The libraries, after school programs, summer learning programs, we want to help um, enhance, not recreate. And if we're looking at some specifics, so for example, Imagination Library, Black United Way of the Black Hills uh, completely funds that throughout our region. Any kiddo from zero, age zero to five can sign up for Imagination Library. They can receive a book once a month, uh, every month until they're five. So that's one. I would also highly recommend um, 
looking on um, some of your local resources like 211 Helpline. Another one is SDPB has a new early learning initiative and they have a vast array of resources including Sesame Streets and communities that they have. Statewide Family Engagement Center is another great one um, online to look at that are all state focused. And then we have Early Learner South Dakota. Um, that's more of kind of like your advocacy, family, parents, providers, you know, what can you do to help um, elevate and everything like that. But um, another one with uh, that we do with Black Hills Reads is free little libraries. Sometimes we'll help to just um, put books in there or give funds to folks who are trying to help maintain the amount of books that are available in those you can actually find a majority of those online where they're located throughout the state. Many communities have a lot of those um, available. Scholastic uh, books online. There's a lot of books that are um, being read out loud. So even if you maybe don't have access to um, hard copy books, having um, it read on online um, where you can see the visual and hear the words being said at the same time is really beneficial. And of course, and I'm not going to take up too much time here because I know Laura is going to cover this in great detail, but working with your, our local um, libraries, we love partnering with our libraries. Um, we've developed some resources that we even have. Um, we worked with the Black Hills uh, Library Consortium and specifically a uh, Piedmont Library director last year. Uh, Laura mentioned themes. They had the Imagine Your Story theme and she created some amazing resources. And so what we did is we helped fund her for her time. And then we put those um, resources on our website for everyone to have access to. We helped her brand and market them. Um, and now they're available to everyone. And we hope to kind of continue to do, do that in the future. Um, again, partner, co-create, um, not recreate. <laughs> So enhancing the programs that are already there and recognizing that this is something that's worth time and resources and you guys helping put all that together. Laura, I want to, you know, let's say I, I want to help. I understand that this is a critical issue. Where do I even start? Well, yes, you know, you can volunteer and support your local public library by participating in facilitating a summer reading event or just joining one that has already been planned. Um, of course, you can be on your local library board or have a friends of the library group that you can join. You can donate funds, books, materials individually for summer reading projects. And, you know, getting in touch with your school librarian or your public librarian and just simply saying, how can I help? Um, they would be more than happy to, to direct you and taking part with those activities. And I think there is a, there, there's not an awareness uh, just how important it is to have access to books. I think some folks take it for granted, having access to reading material, having access to these, uh, you know, to these programs. I mean, how important is it to underserved communities to have these programs in place? Uh, Laura, if you can go a little bit more into that. Yes, you know, we are always looking to um, increase our attendance in the summer reading program. And our goal is to reach 100,000 participants. And we are very close to that. So thinking about, you know, you can take part in many different ways through all the ages, all the way up through adults. Um, and, you know, just taking that time to find out what's happening at your local public library, as well as we have um, the statewide databases that everyone in South Dakota has access to. So as Kayla was saying, if you're looking for ebook resources, um, guided lessons um, on different activities, we have Book Flicks and Mrs. Humblebee's Academy that's available for free for everyone in the state. Uh, you don't even have to have a library card to access those resources. So it is very important to continually be engaged with it and um, making sure that you are aware of how to reach those resources. And just because I want to hear Dr. Cutler talk about this very briefly, you know, maybe you want to just start real small. How important is it or what has been shown out there about reading to your kids? How important is that? It's foundational. It, it's the, um, the heart of early learning, of being able to um, have that. Um, oftentimes when you're reading to children, uh, your child is sitting on your lap. And so you have all the social emotional relationship types of things that happen really early on. And it builds 
Um, it builds that love of learning as well. Um, it builds that relationship of, of this is something that I am, uh, I positively uh, have these feelings for memories for as well as, as just an enjoyable experience. And so it builds academically, it builds cognitively, it builds social emotionally, it's, it's the foundational thing. And so reading um, any, any adults, reading to children, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, um, all of just reading is important all the way around. Big and small, it sounds like you can do a whole lot from very small to even large projects here where it involves uh, trying to help out all the kids uh, in South Dakota. I'm sold. This is an excellent idea. We got to make sure that we're getting kids reading during the summer. And now you have two on one. You have all the different resources available uh, at your fingertips to make this happen. Uh, as long as it's an issue, however, we're always going to be here uh, to talk about it. Thank you all for your time. We're going to be sending things out to make sure you are reading to your kids. We're clear. All right. <laughs> Good job, everyone. That was wonderful. Way to go, everybody. <laughs> Woohoo. And Audrey here's will Audrey, tell you. too. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to pop on and thank everybody uh, who participated, all the panelists. I think it was a lot of really great information. And, um, of course, uh, thank you to New Center One for being available to share this information. Uh, hopefully it'll help some folks uh, tap into some of these resources. So, yeah, just awareness that that is that it's an issue and that there's some really easy ways uh, mm -hmm. and uh, tons of resources available to actually help the issue. How important it is psychologically, mental development, all that. And it, because we're talking so much about mental health now, I'm going on a rant. You know, this is just a, a big piece of the puzzle here that, that we're talking about. So appreciate all your time and. Uh, Hopefully you guys can enjoy the less snowy weather we have in the forecast next couple of days. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you, Andrew, for the invite. Yes, and walking me through the process here. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Kay and uh, Laura, for being a part of this. We really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs>